Hi, this is Tony. Don't want to start your annuals from seed? That's okay. I can show you how you can double them for no cost. First, we're going to take some cuttings of those annuals, which you should do anyway, because when you get them, they already have a flower head just starting on them. And that is showing that the plant is moving from vegetative growth, which is when the plant's growing, into reproductive growth when it's setting seed. And you want it, when you plant it, to still be in vegetative growth. So you're going to want to nip that off anyway. So you might as well make cuttings from that and double the amount of annuals that you have. Now, the way to do this, and let's zoom in here so you can see. I'll take some nice tall ones here to start. This happens to be uh, Celosia. And I am going to cut that about in half. I want to leave several. This is where the, uh, uh, the first new leaves. This is where the first new leaves were. And these are, uh, we'll leave several sets of other, the fresh leaves and cut right above a leaf node. See how I cut that there? Right above that leaf node. And there's a little sprout already starting there. There'll be a sprout there. There'll be a sprout coming out on the leaf below and a sprout under the leaf below. This will make this, this annual here that you bought much bushier, many more flowers. And you're going to take the bit that you cut off here, pinch off that very tip. That tip can lets loose a hormone that tells the plant, I'm alpha, none of the rest of you buds grow, and you want the rest of these buds to grow. So after that, take all of these other large leaves, pick them right off. If it happens to pull a bit on that stem, you can see a little bit of like a string on this here. I took a tiny bit of that stem with it. That's a good thing. That, uh, uh, puts out a tiny bit of damage to that stem and it tells the plant it needs to jump into growth time. I'm taking off the rest of those leaves. The rest of those leaves, uh, I'll even take that one. So that it just has the tiny bit of sprouts left on there. And these lower sprouts even I'm going to take completely because that's where the roots are going to come from. And I take that and put it either in some fresh potting soil push that right down in there at least halfway. I can put several more cuttings in each little tray here and we will see in about a week we'll start to see if they have uh, started to root yet. A really good time to know is when they start to sprout new leaves, new growth on top that tells you new roots are starting down underneath. Snip these off about halfway just above a bud. Every single one of these plants here is still really good. It's good to go. It will branch, it'll be even bushier and happier in the new garden. And now I can take every one of these cuttings, pull off those leaves, nip that very, very top end off, and you've got a great little cutting right there. Now this will end up almost doubling the amount of plants that you have. Now this one here, you can see how it already has growth starting right down, growth starting right down in there. It's really, really thick. So I'm going to come in and just make sure I've cut above a node. Having some plant growth that's left and some that's going to grow really well into the future. And we are off to go. Oh, snip that again. You can see even better the plants how thick they were and how the side shoots had already started growing some and how thick and beautiful and full of flowers this is going to be. Now not every single one of these shoots cuttings is going to take. It'd be nice if every one of them took, but probably not every one. Most of them will. Okay, this cutting here, it doesn't have a clear top to it. It's in a V here. It's just not enough stem to make a good cutting. Make sure that this is well watered 
especially from underneath. And I'm in a very humid climate, so I don't have to put anything around them. But most of you are going to have to either put them in a plastic bag over the top or one of those humidity domes that you can get with your seed starting kits, and that will keep the humidity in there. If moisture uh, droplets start building up inside that humidity dome, then take it off for a few hours, let it dry out just a little bit, and then put it back on. Now this will work with many, many, many different plants, but this is a great way to stretch your gardening dollar. Even if you don't have the, the lights to start seeds. Now these are very short cuttings. So the plant may not have enough energy stored in that bit of stem to be able to make a go of it. But plants want to grow. And these shorter ones, well, these shorter ones want to trim them back anyway. So might as well make some cuttings out of them and see what happens. Most plants, there's no need for rooting hormone. You just need to snip off the top bit, no matter whether it's a shrub, a tree, a perennial, an annual, snip off that top bit. If you have to make a choice of whether to leave, a, get a little bit longer of a cutting and leave the stem a little bit stumpy, I would leave the stem a little bit stumpy because it has a firm root base started already. Just make sure you leave it at least two leaves back on its root system because these are fresh new young young plants. So if there's a choice of having a longer cutting and leaving the mother plant a little bit stumpy, get a longer cutting. You need to take all that energy which is stored in that plant stem with you. I don't expect every cutting to grow roots. Oh, that broke. It broke off before I tended to. Um, that's a little short to try to root out, but I'll put it in anyway, but I don't really expect that one to take. There's just not enough of energy stored in that stem, I think, to be able to put the roots in. Now, the reason why all the leaves come off is because the leaves are set up to have water exit, to transpire out of those leaves, and that will dry the cutting out before it has a chance to root in. So even though the leaves would hold some energy, they're going to be more of a detriment by transpiring all of that moisture out than any advantage to any extra, any extra energy that's stored in them. Now I was very excited to see, see, I broke another one. That may be a big enough stem. It's not the length per se, but it is also a uh, thick, and vibrant so we'll see this one is just thinner by the time I get everything off from there with the thinness of this I don't think it's going to take I'm not going to bother now this is a uh, celosia this is the flame flower celosia not the coxcomb but the one that looks like flames I'm very excited to try this one down here I have red and orange and I'm going to plant them out in the Sun they start blooming out to have just the look as if it was a fireplace with all of those flames coming up with the bright, bright reds and oranges in that flame shape. I have a hard time finding this Celosia anywhere. And I know the reason why is because most people, when they buy their annuals, they want to see them in flower first to see what they look like. So if it's not flowering, people don't buy it. People don't buy it, growers don't grow it. So Celosia does not flower till a little bit later. It doesn't really flower in the pot. Or if it is flowering in the pot, you're going to have to take that flower off because it's never going to get up to its full glorious size. So it's not a plant that shows very well in a retail shop. So it's hard to find. So when I saw these at my local nursery, I jumped right on it and bought an entire flat. You can do the same thing with house plants. Take cuttings, take the leaves off, get them rooted. A lot of people root in water. I do not like to root in water. When you root things in water, the roots are very, very delicate and they end up getting damaged when you move them 
to the regular potting soil and the plant has to regrow them anyway. So just start right out with your cuttings directly into potting soil. I know it's you're waiting for it to tip over and it's not the best for the plant. Go ahead, root it right into the soil and have your house plant go from there. Okay, root one in the water so you can see it, but the rest of them put right in some soil or even some vermiculite is fine. Uh, it will make a stronger root and you'll have better luck with your propagating of your house plants or anything that you're propagating if you're going directly into soil rather than into water. Now, I like to line, I have a regular tray rather than a waterproof tray, so I line it with a paper bag so that to wick the water up, I just pour it here and it about, about a quart, uh, I need to get some more water, and it will wick it right up from underneath in those cuttings. Here, I got some more water, and I'm just going to pour it on the outside, on, so I'm not dislodging any of that vermiculite. And you might even be able to see as it becomes darker, as it soaks right up through from underneath. Oh yes, it's firming up now. There's still some more. It's going to soak up some more. See how easily this moves? That's because it's not wet yet. Oh, that water's all soaked up again. Let's... Maybe half a gallon of water. Let's see. Vermiculite soaks up a lot of water. It holds it really well too. Okay, see how it's not moving nearly... Well, there's a little bit on top, but it is wicking right up through very nicely. It's... Got a little bit more water there. Yeah, a little more for it to wick up. Oh, I can see it now. It's getting very dark. Yep, it has wicked up through all of it now. Just sucked it up from the bottom. That is so much heavier than it was before. It was super, super light. You see how all of these are shorter, cut right down. They are just still going to thrive even more than they were before. And I have another whole flat of cuttings that are gonna root and take off and I can go from there. So glad you came today. If you found this helpful, please click like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.